This example will show how easily a moving load analysis may be done in SAP 2000. The model will be a two-span, two-lane concrete bridge consisting of one straight and one curved segment with a total length of 200 feet. The radius of the curved portion is 800 feet and the width of the concrete box section is 24 feet. Default units are kips and feet. We start the process by clicking on File, New Model, and selecting the New Model Template Bridge, or BAG, for Bridge Analysis Generator. This template can generate the geometry, properties, and loadings for your bridge model, but for this example we are primarily interested in the geometry generating capabilities. On this form, select File, New Model once again, and type Curved for the bridge title. Ask the program to add five extra joints per span in an effort to approximate the curved geometry with linear frame objects. Next, click on the Define Geometry button, and on this form start by entering the bearing line for the beginning of curve. In this case, it is north 85 degrees east. Make sure to enter the minutes and seconds. For this example, we have a left bearing curve with a radius of 800 feet. Starting at station 20 feet with an ending bearing of north 75 degrees east. The second segment is straight, so no curve data is needed. The abutment data is populated with default values. Make sure that they are appropriate for your model. Note that the abutments are released in both the transverse and longitudinal directions, providing roller supports. Both the bent and column properties may be defined within the generator, however we will assign different properties to the bridge spans and column later in the tutorial. The geometry is now complete and may be viewed several different ways by clicking on the various view buttons. The last step within the generator is to send the data to SAP 2000 by clicking on the export button. We now have a 3D and plan view of our bridge geometry. Note the roller supports at the abutments as previously shown while the column has a fixed support. Next, select the bridge objects and click on Assign, Frames, Sections and select Add Box Tube. The bridge deck will be modeled with a concrete box girder. It has a depth of three and a half feet, a width of 24 feet, and wall thicknesses of eight inches. Remember that the default units of feet are shown in the lower right hand corner of the interface. Next, select the columns and repeat the assign command, but this time add a rectangular section. The column will have a dimension of 4 feet by 6 feet. Go to the Set Display button and click on Shade Objects to obtain an enhanced view of the model. Note that each span has been modeled with six segments as requested in the initial bag template. Next, start to define the bridge loading properties by going to Define bridge loads, lanes. We will add two lanes named lane 1 and lane 2. 
Lanes are located via frame objects, and we will define the lane eccentricity later when assigning to the bridge members. Go back to the defined bridge loads and select vehicle to define two standard vehicle types an HS20 44 and an HS20 44L or lane load. Go back to the Define Bridge Loads once more and click on Vehicle Classes. Name the class HS20 and add both of the previously defined vehicles to the list. Lastly, click on the Bridge Responses command, which for this model will be displacements and frame forces for the entire model. Make sure that the exact method of calculation is selected. Next, go to the Define Analysis Cases command and click on Add New Case to add a case for the moving loads. Name the case Moving and scroll down to select moving load from the case type. The loads applied area of the form shows the vehicle classes previously defined, which in this case is just HS20. Add this assignment and note that both lanes are selected for loading, which is what we want. Next, Select all the frame objects or the entire bridge deck in the plan view. Go to Assign, Frame, Lane command and assign Lane 1 an eccentricity of minus 6 feet. Repeat the selection. and this time assign lane 2 an eccentricity of plus 6 feet. Both lanes have now been located. Repeat the selection and go to Assign Frame Output Stations and set the maximum number to 2. We can reduce the number of output stations due to the number of frame objects modeling each span. Change the plan view to an elevation view and the model is ready to be analyzed. The bridge analysis generator created a number of analysis cases, all of which we will shut off in this example except for the dead load and the moving load case we defined. Click on the Run Now button to start the analysis. Make the elevation view active and go to the Display Show Influence Lines Frames command. And for lane 1, type in frame ID 5014 for a mid-span member and click on moment 33. The influence line for that element is generated. Repeat the process. Only select lane 2, frame ID 70112, which is a column member, and click on axial force. The influence line for the column is generated. Other member forces may be displayed on the 3D view such as dead load forces.
A right click on any member will bring up a detailed force display for that object. Force envelopes for the moving load case may be displayed in the same manner. Again, a right click brings up a detailed display. This concludes this tutorial.